Hello and welcome. I'm the Restless Kaiser. And I'm Johnny B, but together we are Modeling, Modeling for Advantage. Advantage. JB's bright box. Boom. Very bright box. Yeah. Which orange, is good. red, new colours. Orange, red, orange, black. Orange, orange black. black. So this is like, they've done this so that it catches your eyeballs. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, uh, I like so the it new does. packaging. It, it stands out. It's very reminiscent of the Kill Team packaging. It is. The original. The, same the, the original. Uh, yeah. They've got a lot more black. So, but what is it? We say it's a new thing, but what is it? It is the new starter set for World of Tanks the miniatures game. The original one came with like a Cromwell and a Sherman, very much a World War II setting. This is not really about historical wargaming. No, this is quite the opposite, isn't it? This is kind of much more leaning into that World of Tanks thing. Big time. All right, so we're expecting the box content to be very similar with the exception of the vehicles in it. So what? Oh, so we're gonna open it up and talk to you about it. What comes in the box, John? Uh, it says on the back here, which we were hoping to have in there, four assembled and painted plastic tanks. Uh, the Centurion Mark One, the Mouse, which is ridiculous, the T29 and an IS-3. You get the rule book, the dice that you'll need, uh, four tank cards and various other and it's a premium code for World of Tanks as well, I think. Do you get that in there? I think so. You didn't Bonus code for one. existing players. Bonus code for existing players. All right. invite. So let's let's have a, look, have a look what's in there then. And obviously in the top. I remember when we interviewed Pete Seminovich, he was saying he said about the packaging, he said like black stuff with like a grey vehicle inside just doesn't really know what's on the shelf. Yeah. yeah. Um but it, immediately <laughs> So we're confronted with this plastic hors d'oeuvres. That's tray. a big old a lot of plastic. With these tanks in. We're going to talk about the tanks in detail, but let's just see what else is in the box. Okay. We? All right. Oh, I thought that was a little cover Ooh. there. It is a little cover. Well. Oh. It's a schedule. It says, this starter set is just the beginning. Just the beginning. Oh, you'd have to put up a picture of that. There's some crazy tanks on this here. This picture has been all over the internet. Is it? So they're giving us... When we spoke to Pete Seminovich, he said that they have already planned up to wave 18 of World of Tanks. We're seeing waves this is up to 13, 15. 14 and 15 here, but they have plans for beyond that. Which takes us up to May. But what you're 24. seeing in here is you're seeing post-war, early post-war tanks. That's what you're seeing here. Some of this is science fiction tanks, <laughs> like Paper the tanks. mouse. Is that what you call Paper them? Paper Panzers is one of the things. Paper Panzers. We'll talk about, about mouse when we get there. And these are kind of like and some mouse variants up here that were, that were never modern paper. But some of these are 1950s vehicles as mm. well. So, you know, um, like Korea, things like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, moving on to Checkpoint Charlie. So, and I think that that's like, they're really leaning into the, what can we do in plastic by having a relationship with this World of Tanks franchise, which is really open-ended about like where the Second World War is yeah. <laughs> and where that fits in with it all and what's real and what isn't. Because it's just a video game, right? Ultimately, yeah. Yeah, and mm. if you don't want to have these tanks, this type of tanks in your game, you don't have to. But putting them in here... Yeah. Give, certainly gives that option, Opens and this up a this, whole is, world. this is for a game. This is saying it's it's a game. It's not history. Yes. Which four tanks have in a bash in a farm yard is not history anyway, <laughs> is it? Not not really. I mean, it might be a little bit, but not really. Um, all the other bits. Right. Sorry, I just tipped it out so that it's I could get because to... there was a beautiful insert tray. There now. is a lovely insert in there which you can sort of see on there. <laughs> yeah. Via the glare. Yeah. Um, I thought I'd be special and and. And tip it that. over. All right. I think that these are decks of cards in all the languages. That would be why there's Because I'm each. seeing four critical hit decks. Uh, and ironically, they are exactly in, as you say, different in, languages. In, in four different languages. So these are four sets that. of the upgrade cards. Well, so I think, again, for them as a company, they've been thinking about, like, they have a lot of product. They do. And that stockists cannot stock the amount of product that they have. They're just not going to give it that much shelf space. So they've been looking at ways that they can kind of consolidate their range, that one item is, is more useful. So they put four, the four major, lang major European languages. I think these are like, is it French, German, and Spanish or something like that? Yep. I don't know if it said that on there. Most probably. It'll say in tiny words down here what they are. For a gamer who's not a purist, you do then have four copies of all the upgrades. Oh, cheeky. You I want to use the German one specifically, knowing that my opponent can't read, can read them. or speak German. But a lot of the information is in pictographs. Shh. All right. 
Okay. <laughs> we'll look at that. We'll look at them. We're going to look at the English one. Yeah, gun rammer. You want to try the gun? Oh, rammer? maybe that's why I couldn't see at the bottom because I was looking at the English. <laughs> <laughs> What, uh, what's in this pack then? So the this pack, pack here, pack this is pack. hopefully going to be at least the starter set rules, plus a board, plus your code, and of course it's really well shrink wrapped. Please hold. Funk! Finally, I now made it John through the protective the seal. Now rulebook open. I saw on the back. That's got your code. Not as you got your. Does it tell stuff. you all the it things? It tells you the languages. Oh, it does tell you all the things. So we have got French, German, Polish, and. Uh, British or English. There you go. Any bonus code there. Uh, that bonus code is probably worthless to me now because somebody else has seen it online. Oh! You can go type it in. If you were quick, pause the video, enjoy. <laughs> Get your rule books also in the four those languages. languages. Which one's English? Yeah. Is it the top one? That one. Did that say rule book? Oh, yes. yes. That's <laughs> Yeah, that's, a, that's quite the tell, isn't it? I do not propose to read this rule book before your very eyes. It looks the same. It I, looks the I would same. Have thought so. There may be some differences, but I doubt it. Uh, what else do we get? Get your... <laughs> that's all right. You get your card stuff. Which you get is, card stuff. Now, this is... I think this is a genius idea. You get... Yeah, all right, it's flat terrain, but you get terrain. You do get terrain. Um... And in World of Tanks, there's actually terrain set up as part of it because it's played Massively, on a three yeah. by three board. It's really close in. There's rules about how you deploy the terrain, um, and it gives you and it's decent quality cardstock. It's not it's a piece thick of stuff, paper. Yeah. It's good. You know, you get your woodland on one side, you get your hills on the other side. Hills and huh. wo woodland and new rules. You get your damage tokens and your uh, speed tokens and so forth. Uh, and then and then walls, which are like a blative armor in in World of Tanks. Yes, in that was that version. was a new thing, wasn't it? They that bought was a new in. thing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, these, I mean, if they're not identical, I'd be astonished because this looks to be the same set of cards yeah. that we've yeah. seen. There's no reason for them to have done. Um, and counting one, two, three, four, five, six. There's only four tanks in the box, and you've got six uh, speed six ones. Speed ones. Yeah. You get all the tokens you need. If you've not played the game yeah. before, check out one of our games, obviously. Yeah. But yeah, there's you various can things see you need to track. that we bought a couple of sets of the acrylic tokens, but we often play with more vehicles than mm. just three or four each. True. Um, so it's possible you need those. So, so that's that, cool. That stuff is the same. The rules look the same. There may be some rules changes, but I'll have to read the whole book to notice that. Yeah. Um, I'd like to think Battlefront would have announced that, you know, if, if that you they would have made more of a thing about it. Yeah. Now, interestingly, there change. is something in the back here about match play and tiers. Ooh. So, while the tanks itself has tiers, and these cards, the vehicle cards, say have tiers on as well. That's a good thing. Um, but I didn't realise that they necessarily worked like that. But I think that they represent different types of equipment. So, like, all the artillery is tier 8 and stuff like that. I'm not saying it is oh, eight, okay. but the, I remember they released all the artillery together. But it's not like everyone's tier two is a heavy vehicle. But there may be patterns within that because what it's suggesting in match play is depending on what tier of the game you play, you play with a different number of points, and that matters when we start looking at these. Because the real thing that you're probably here to see are these massive tanks. Are the get. massive tanks, and we are going to talk a little bit about them in a little bit more detail. So uh, if we get the get the cards open, then John, if you find it, is that the English one? I think so. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. Oh yeah. I wonder what that was. A little bit of plastic get on free front and screens. back to uh, stick to your mobile phone. Uh, no, so it protects the cards, which is nice. Good windows. So we've got Mouse, Centurion, T29, IS3. Centurion, for example, is a fantastic inclusion in a plastic kit. This vehicle is in service in various European armies. It's a British post-war tank. They make loads of variants of it. The Danes have them, all sorts. That's a real one. So, yeah, so... the. A particular version of it is in this kit that fits within the theme here. So what do you want to start with, John? Which tank do you want to talk about first? Mm. Just the one that's on the top there. Let's have a look at the mighty IS-2. Well, do you want to read them out of uh, the Staterunios while I cut open Full stats. the cards and we'll look at the, any Soviet Blimey. cards? Blimey, this may or it. may not mean anything to you. It's a tier 8. Um, it's a heavy tank. 
Have we mm. seen heavy tanks in the game? Before? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, okay. Tiger is a heavy tank. Of course it is. It gave is a heavy tank. I was expecting I super heavy tank. It is a whole 98 points to use. Uh, you've got a 98 of, points. Yeah, it's like, don't we play 100 points? 200. 200. 200 points. normally. Uh, so you've got. <laughs> Uh, firepower of six, not so bad. Mobility of two, survivability, so you've got four. Uh, initiative three, which is pretty low, and you've got eight hit points to play with there. It's also got a big gun. When attacking, you may modify a uh, penetrating hit to a critical hit. Yes. So that's that's the big gun rule. Big is it? gun. Big gun. When attacking, you may modify a penetrating hit to a critical hit. Wow. So a hundred point vehicle. So if you just give us a moment, I was just looking through here, see if there were any unique upgrades yeah. for the vehicles in this deck, and there are not. So it's pretty much box Which standards. is interesting, because normally there's stuff that's unique to the tank and unique tank commanders. Yeah, but they might come in a separate pack. So you might need to buy the expansion pack with this vehicle in to, oh. get, to get that. But they may not be unique tank commanders with this little true, wave. True. We don't know without looking at that. But do you want, we're going to see if we can find one of the real oh, little more heavy yeah. tanks, like ah. the King Tiger. IS3. So IS3 is an interesting one because mm -hmm. the I think in the like Berlin Victory Parade, the Soviets rocked up with some IS3. Oh really? Like if this had gone on, yeah. look what you're coming up. This against. is what we were working on. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the and the Western armies kind of looked at that and was like. We don't have anything that can deal with that mm. at all. And that's their new tank. That, that IS3. I think so. I'm, I might I might be mistaken, but I think that that's what happened. I think in 1945, they'd built like 10 of them and they showed them off. Boom. And how does it compare? Massive. So what we've done is we've got like a super heavy tank from, we'll try from to, yeah. a histori yeah, you know, a historic World War II one that's already in the game for comparison. So then IS2 was 73 points rather than 98. What do you get for all of those extra points? You get four survivability rather than two. That's a big deal. That's four defense dice yeah, sitting on your back. butt. Yep. That's what you're paying for. Because uh, it's still got mobility two, still got initiative three, still got firepower six. They both have the big gun. It loses the fortress rule, but it's okay because it's got more armor to start with. Now the fortress rule means that you oh, don't lose anything for side, for side armor, armor, but this thing has better side armor even with the negative. Yeah? Yeah. Boom. So that's the IS-3. Nice model. Certainly smoother turret in design. Lovely yes. It's slick and it, it's a big boy. It is a big it's boy. It's a long boy. Do you want to grab one of the... Have we got some out? No, no, I'm just thinking if you is get like a T-34 for comparison or something. What's this one? Just to show them how much bigger it is. No, that's a that's a T fifty four. That's, well, <laughs> that's, more, that's, that's much a bigger. more modern tank anyway. This yeah. one. Yeah, all right. Well, T fifty fours are actually not very big, but uh, so there you go. There's there's your size comparison from a from a T thirty four. It's quite substantially bigger, but not too much higher, which is the which is the point about those things, right? So that's uh, IS three. Nice to see. Uh, what do you want to look at next? T29 is the newer one. The T29. On so this is the oh, Americans. This. Oh my God. You, you, have a, you have a handle of that, John. I mean, that is overcompensating for something, right? The right. turret is longer than the tank itself, almost. Yeah. You mean the barrel? The barrel, yeah. Well, well the turret, the definitely, yeah. The turret, the turret on this thing is huge. Tell me about this beast. And You've got I assume a, a lot of that is counterweight in that huge turret this, bustle. Uh, but it could be just ammunition storage. It's just that the gels are so long. I mean, one of the things, if you look at an, uh, the turret on an early T-34, or the turret on, an, on, on a pre-war French tank or something, mm. they're tiny things. They are little and you look nubbins. at modern tanks, and the turret is almost as big as the hull. <laughs> Yeah. And there's just more and more stuff. It's like this is the working part of the tank. In the in the hull is the engine and the driver and some ammunition. The turret is where most of the crew are and most of the equipment. All and of they just the technology. keep getting bigger. But that turret is massive. So T29 is rocking firepower, only five. Survivability is three. So can these are these are pushing past that like You've mostly got twos and sometimes got threes. Yeah. These are really pushing into that. Mobility two and initiative four, seven hit points, whole bunch, one, two, three, four, five, six crew positions. 
Uh, it's got, I assume it's two part ammunition. It's got two loaders. It may just be oh. that, and that was a thing again with some of these tanks. Um, oh, there's two loader positions. Some of these late war heavy tank ideas is they have a second loader because it wasn't because it's two part ammunition. It's because the ammunition is really heavy, and they think mm -hmm. that the one loader is going to get knackered. Yeah, three <laughs> so shots, and that's so there's really an extra dumb. guy. Yeah, so this has got the heavy tank rule as well. Not surprising. No other special rules, but only sixty seven points. That's pretty good. It is decent. I'd say it's an. Is it a medium tank? No, no it's, it's a heavy. heavy. It's heavy. It's an interesting all rounder, but I think in these late war tanks, the firepower five is going to sting you. Yeah, big in time these, in these ones. So, what was Super Pershing like? Super Pershing. This is rocking in at eighty four points, mm. uh, but statistically, I think it's a little bit better. It's got a firepower of six opposed to yeah, five. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's more points. Survivability is the same. This is true. Yeah. Mobility is two. Initiative is four, same as. And it's got a additional. And it's got a heavy tank. So this isn't this isn't a big up. This isn't an upgrade on Super Pershing. And uh, this is a medium tank apparently. And the Super Pershing is a medium tank. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I don't know a lot about my knowledge outside of the Second World War in terms of tanks and so forth, is not what, you know, not what it is about got, World War Got a big gun. I don't know anything about the T-29, <laughs> even if it was a real tank. And I apologise for that, but I don't want to tell you something that I don't know to be true. But the model is a beast. The model is an absolute beast, yeah. Millions uh, of wheels as well. Yeah. It's got a lot of wheels. Not big wheels, a lot of wheels. Eight, eight across the bottom. Eight across the bottom, right. It's quite distinctive, isn't it? All right. <laughs> um, Next. So I don't know what that brings to the table. Uh, just the different that tank. That wasn't already there. Into, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's stats for a different tank. But I think probably if you want to go up against these like, kind of paper pans and, and late one monsters, you, the firepower dice is worth paying a lot of points for. Yeah. It really is. Makes a lot of difference. What's up next? Shame. Uh, Challenger seems to be next, so we might as well have a look. The Centurion? Uh, sorry, yes. The Centurion. Centurion. I was looking at the Challenger mm -hmm. comparison. Mm -hmm card that I have here. You get your hands on that beastie. Guy. So, okay. And that looks like a, a, a modern British tank, doesn't it? Like yeah, it's the skirts, the that's shape, the a turret. sleeker design. You know, it, I mean, it, it doesn't look like Chieftain, but it kind of looks a bit like Chieftain. It, you know you know what I mean? You yeah. can see the the kind of origin. Certainly still got design elements of the Cromwell knocking around in there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, stat wise, we got. Uh, Centurion. So Centurion is Britain's post-war tank, immediate post-war. Mm -hmm. So this is a medium tank. It's 66 points because it's got firepower five, not six. Two mobility, two survivability, seven initiative. So for firepower oh, really? five, seven initiative is good and seven hit points. Only the standard four crew positions. Mm. So this is this is like just like an upgraded medium tank. Yeah, I assume uh, it's not got a particularly big gun, has it? With firepower five, it's going to be a ninety mil or something. Yeah, it's not got it's not got a big big gun, but that initiative seven on a card. Use a lot of cards will give you bonus initiative, but they're all working off that base. Initiative seven as a as a mainline tank, sixty six points. I love that. You look you, high you, initiative. You love the Cromwell's, love the Cromwell's, for, that, Cromwell's for that. Yeah. So how did it compare with Challenger, which was so the kind of pre- Challenger, it's the, the same but different. Uh, it's at one tier lower. It's 73 points, the Challenger tank. Um, As opposed to 66. 66. Yeah. What did you get out of that? It's also a tank destroyer opposed to a medium tank. Yeah. Fair enough. You get six firepower. Mobility is slightly better on three. Survivability is the same at two. And initiative six. So it's not, it's not lacking. And you lose a hit point. Oh, yes. Hit and points. you lose a hit point. Yeah. I still think you want Challenger for the firepower. And an additional crew position. And that Mobility 3 is dirty. Mobility 3 is just as good as having a high initiative, I reckon. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's oh, ideally, you have both. Well. So it's interesting. So I would definitely see this if I want to fight a later period. If I want to fight a post-war conflict. If you're following some sort of But if you just like straight up playing, theme. Yeah. So there's kind of two aspects to this, isn't there? One is it is talking about these tanks like how do these fit within, within if I like to play my games with a historical mm. pen? But the other is how are these stats for the points? Yes. Is yes. the two is the kind of two angles that we're looking at these cards Definitely. from. All right. Which is why we're comparing it to another kind of pre pre existing monster. All right, last is, the mouse. This is. is I'd this say is the elephant insane. in the room, but the elephant is a different vehicle. Is it really? I always yeah, yeah. Ferdinand is one of the tank destroyer versions. Or German vehicle. But, I mean, 
This feels like a train <laughs> rather than a tank. Yeah, this is one of those things that you see, as you say, this is guided on the train track. I've just bought a tiger out. I know it's not the card we have, but it's not the king tiger. But model wise, it, this is it could eat a tiger. It significantly could, bigger. It is much, much bigger. Tori keeps falling off. You know, you could literally fit a tiger inside of it. How does it compare with that T29? That was pretty big. I mean, T29, it's got, T29's got it got a longer barrel, but even look, it dwarfs that. This is insane. It is Who come enormous. up with this madness? You want to give him the stats on mouse? Statistically speaking, for $128, $128. you get a big gun heavy tank, tier 10, firepower 7. Seven. Flat seven. So that, that's just huge. Ironically, I think it might be 128 mil or something. It's got an big. enormous it's gun. It's fat, it's fat I think barrel. it might be a naval gun. Like for the Zanfa fired from a ship. I'm surprised it's got a turning turret. It's <laughs> sort of firepower like. It's going to knock it out of yeah. the air. Off its, straight off its mount. Uh, you have a mobility of one, however. Boom. And I think that's generous. Yeah. Because <laughs> normally there was no fuel. Uh, survivability of four, so the armor's good. Comparable to whatever one that was. Was it the mm. IS-3? Initiative of four. Boo. 12 hit points though, mate. <laughs> yes. This, this <laughs> thing. This is insane. It's a... You've got a small, you've got a village that live inside it. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a million six, guys inside. Six, uh, six spaces. So this is this is the war gamer's ultimate paper panzer because it did exist. Sort of. From, well, no, from memory, they had two prototypes, one of which worked, like could move. <laughs> This is ignoring wooden and Yeah, yeah, But yeah. one was in working order that had done some trials. <laughs> and I think, and again, this, this could be apocryphal. The problem is when you've read as many books as I have, you know, it's like, did, yeah, but was that a Sven Hassel novel? Yeah, <laughs> some yeah. history or something. But I'm pretty sure they tried to put one into battle in the sort of death throes of the Reich. And obviously it broke down. They're moving five miles or, or whatever, you know, through a track and you need you need a whole workshop to come to it to fix it. That's insane. But th this is everything that is wrong with German tank design. Now, in, in a game, and if you're playing this just as a straight up as, as, as a game, just for its own fun and enjoyment, there's absolutely nothing wrong with you using this and enjoying it because the Germans try to use it. Yeah. As a, as a piece of history, I think it's 80 something tons or maybe even over 100 tons. It's like, and you've got a fuel problem. <laughs> this is not what you need. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really is not what you need. It's the total opposite of what you need right now. But it's part of that kind of ongoing philosophy is the Germans were always trying to build something better than, in particular, what the Soviets had. Yeah, and the, so the Soviets threat. had like T-34 was a real problem for them in, 30, in 41 and to some extent in 42 because the Panzer III was not as good a vehicle. Mm. So then Panther comes out, which is a step, a whole step better in every way yeah. than than that. But then the Soviets are starting to bring out the Stalin tanks. And then, you know, so the suddenly Tiger isn't actually that tough. Again, something like an IS-2, mm. it's outgunned, it's outmatched. So you get Tiger 2. It's just the inevitable escalation. Of war, escalation. Yeah, bigger is better, right? Where do we go from here? But then you start to get in these kind of ridiculous, I mean, the size of that turret is just ridiculous. But I think it's because the shells, the you know, shells that are in there are absolutely enormous. It's a tank in itself. I'm just going to fill the turret. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How much bigger than the T-34 is the turret? It is, oh, my God. <laughs> so, in fact, that is a mouth. <laughs> that's, that's a mouth. Look at that. There you that's go. insane. But fun. But, you know, I think a lot of gamers are pleased to have a mouse in their collection. Of and you can play that, you know, even if you're a real history buff, you can play that scenario where, you know, we're attacking the workshop where they're actually trying to build this nice thing. If the war had gone on, would they have ever fielded many of them? I don't think, I don't think they were capable of building many or getting them to the battlefield. That's you know, a lot of reasons. What's going to tow this when it's damaged? Uh, another bigger tank. A train. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, it doesn't fit on railway cars. It's just like this thing's a nightmare. But how much better is it 
than Tiger 2. Sorry, yeah, I, put, I, got, I got the IS3 back system. out to have a look at it. So Tiger 2, we're looking at one less firepower, a firepower 6. Points-wise, it's only 84 points. Uh, mobility is 2, so it's well fast compared <laughs> to the <laughs> mouse. Faster, yeah. uh, survivability of 3, so that's only one less armour. Mm. Uh, initiative is the same at 4, but hit points of 8. Hit points of so eight. So it's a whole light tank so it's, lower. It's, it's, yeah, it's like a light <laughs> tank compared to this thing. Um, so what do, you, what, what do we think overall? The, for the, the two different aspects. So one is, as, a, as, just a, as just some new game pieces to play a beer and pretzels game, which is really what it is. Yeah. If it, yeah, entry point. You've got some interesting looking... Assuming you know nothing about history and yeah, care yeah. not for it. You've got some crazy, wacky-looking tanks with big old guns. That's gonna, that's gonna draw me in for sure. Yeah, yeah. And and, and the mouse is a, is is a drum. And the I mouse. Think it just is an iconic. And that whack and great gun. Yeah. And you know, just yeah. Little these are beasts. Like the IS three looks like a baby compared to these. <laughs> these yeah, other ones, completely. Really. It's like, and I thought that was a beast. And it is a beast compared to what it was going to go up against. That's insane. All right. And um, so there's that. And then so then what about this idea about um the kind of Flames of War then moving into this kind of 1950s stuff. Think it, uh, or like late war, late war maybe, you know, the things that, the yeah. things that could have been. Oh, I think and how, how, where, where, where are you on that as a, as a, as a war game? How do you feel about the kind of old history options in your war games? Well, come on, man. I'm more fantasy and sci-fi. So that, that yeah. appeals to me, that fact. Um, yeah. And more importantly, I think it might appeal to a lot of others that wouldn't generally touch historical for fear of it having doing it to wrong. be historic. Yeah, exactly yeah, that. So yeah. they might go, they might think, yeah, I can get into this. Because yeah. they're interesting looking tanks, they're fun looking mm. tanks. And it's a game at the end of the day, so... Yeah, yeah. Enjoy. I, I mean, I, think I, I, like, I like it. It's not something that I would normally play. No. That, but... There's a whole bunch of, of of stories and 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 things out there of these kind of old history. What if the war had carried on for another five years? You know, I can't think of any off the top of my head. But if you're a real fan of that genre of fiction, oh yeah, for sure, or whatever, or one particular line of that, you're going to be able to play those wars with with these. Yeah. And I I don't think the flames of war or tanks loses anything by having these available because you can always play with people that choose not to use them exactly that if, the, if it's not to your taste yep. i love the fact that they're able to make plastic kits that is kind of korean war era vehicles um because i'm not sure that battlefront flames of war would be able to put out plastic kits without the world of tanks backing kinda, sort of thing the, yeah that, that kind of brings it to a big the market reason for it. Coming yeah. to the tabletop yeah. is because World of Tanks has it's, got all it's the It's coming in this, yeah. not not in their whatever the checkpoint Charlie or whatever. Yeah, yeah and true. That, and that may open up more into war pit or post war periods for Flames of Water cover with the plastic kits. Because the problem with the kits that are for the more minor areas is they're always going to be resin and metal because the market isn't there. Exactly. If that. you want to do Arab Israeli war, you yeah. want to do Korea. It's like loads of companies are making a 15 mil Korean era tank in resin, yep. in metal, with a wonky barrel <laughs> and all of that. <laughs> but the market is big enough, whereas by having this relationship with World of Tanks, you can that get whole it, period you can get it tooled up there. and then it opens up all sorts of options. And you had these beautiful <laughs> plastic kits. And they are beautiful and the game is fun. Remember that. I forgot to mention the dice. So, uh, overall, as a starter set, I, I think it's much more of a World of Tanks starter set oh, than definitely. the previous one was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, as a purist gamer, the other one, but the other set was fine. But I like this. We're definitely going to paint some of these up and play with Sweet. these. With the, with the big, big tanks. And I think we need to play with the post-Wave 12 tanks a bit. Yeah. Instead of doing that. It, rather than being gamey about it and saying, "Why well, is it really better than like no, Tiger Two or something?" I want, four I want to play with the different, different tanks. tanks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Might even let you paint one pink or something. Yes, please. You know, I lean into that, that. that. Into that very different style. Let's do it. Those are our thoughts. We didn't mention the great, the trays and stuff in there to keep all your bits. Yeah, afterwards. everything. There's no it's damage nice. there, so um, good. And if you're interested in buying set and you live in the UK, modelingforadvantage.co.uk's website has got one for you. Oh. 
Those check are, it out. Those are our thoughts, guys. Thank you for watching. Bye bye. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you enjoy our content, like the video, maybe leave us a comment. Thank you.